Hey YouTube, I wanted to do a quick video just to kind of talk about some things pertaining to new builds with DDR5. So if you're someone who is in the process of upgrading to one of the new platforms that supports DDR5 RAM like this one here. So this is the X870E platform with the Ryzen 9 750X 3D. But this is just one example of a new DDR5 platform. So there's a couple of things that I've seen, several comments and questions on a lot of the videos that I've done pertaining to DDR5 memory. So I wanted to make this video just to kind of shed some light on this, kind of more of like an informational video. So if you want to run four sticks of RAM, you can do that. It's relatively plug and play if you're running single rank dims. So single rank dims for DDR5 means that each individual stick is going to be either 16 gigabytes, 8 gigabytes, which is very rare for DDR5, but we'll just say for argument's sake 8 gigabytes, 16 gigabytes, as well as 24 gigabytes. So the largest density for single rank on DDR5, at least today at time of filming, is going to be the ones that I have here. So these are each 24 gigabytes each. So you take 24, you multiply that by four, you get 96 gigabytes of RAM. So 96 gigabytes of RAM across four sticks is relatively easy if you're someone who wants to run this at say 6,000 or even 6,400 is working. So I'm currently running this at 6,400. Yes, that's right, four sticks of DDR5 running at 6,400. I've been running it like this ever since I built the computer last year. So the only thing that was upgraded recently was the CPU. Before we were running on a non-X3D CPU, so now we're running on an X3D CPU, but it is exactly the same. So that is kind of information for those of you that want four sticks of memory because you like the look of four sticks of RAM versus two sticks of RAM. I get this comment all the time. I get this question all the time. But 96 gigabytes is going to be the typical maximum that you can expect. If you need more RAM, such as 128, 192 gigabytes, which we already have covered in previous videos, you can run that, but it's going to be very motherboard specific and it's going to be a lot harder to do unless you're okay with running at lower speeds like DDR5 4800 or 5200, possibly 5600. But you can do 6000, but it requires manual tuning. It's very board specific and you really need to understand what you're doing specifically with the proct ODT and the on die bus terminations because the resistance values are actually the things that can determine whether or not you can get that working with full stability or not. So in the BIOS, there's a couple of voltages to also be aware of if you're running memory, for example. So the main one to look out for is going to be VSOC. It depends on the BIOS, but you're gonna to wanna to look for something like SOC voltage or VSOC or VDD SOC, basically any of those, depending on the motherboard brand, they might call it something slightly different. It is basically the SOC voltage. This is probably the most important voltage when it comes to running DDR5 with certain speeds and certain gear ratios. So this one, typically, if you're running only two sticks of memory up to 6,000, you don't need a lot of VSOC. It can stay anywhere from 1.0 to or you know one volt essentially up to 1.2 volts which is what we're running here now anything above 1.2 volts is going to be a lot higher than average and unless you're really trying to do some insane memory overclock on the memory controller you don't really need to push this above 1.2 volts so my recommendation for most people that just want to run DDR5 6000 or up to DDR5 6200 or maybe even DDR5-8000 in a one to two ratio is to set it manually to 1.2 volts. I feel like this is the easiest way to guarantee stability without having to deal with higher idle temperatures, higher idle power consumption because you're running at a higher VSOC voltage. Because this voltage affects the IO die and that does take away from your overclocking headroom on the cores. So just keep that in mind. So the higher this number, the lower your overclock headroom if you're doing something with PBO or Curve Optimizer. So you don't want this to really go above 1.2. 1.2 is my recommendation. That's probably the most important voltage. Then the other ones 
VDD, so this is the DRAM voltage, and DRAM VDDQ. So these typically are set automatically when you load an Expo or XMP profile from your RAM kit. So you typically don't have to change these. The RAM kit that I'm using uses 1.35 volts, but you normally don't need to change it. Sometimes you do, it really depends on what you're doing with the memory and whether or not the memory is on the QVL list of your motherboard. So I highly recommend purchasing RAM that is on the QVL list of your specific motherboard. So, but this typically are the only other two voltages. The only other voltage besides those would be this one here. So the CPU VDDIO, this is memory controller voltage. This one typically will match or be very close to the actual VDD and VDDQ voltage. So the 1.35 from the memory XMP profile or Expo profile. The VDDIO typically is a copy of that, but not always. Sometimes it's 0.1 volt higher or 0 0.01 higher. That's what I've seen on average testing a bunch of different motherboards and memory kits. But that is the other voltage that you may want to consider manually setting, but that's only really if you're doing some kind of memory overclock and you're trying to tune like latencies or something like that. Otherwise, you don't really need to mess with this. But those are kind of the primary voltages to be aware of for those of you that are upgrading to a DDR5 platform. I think if we're talking on the Intel platform, there is another voltage, VCCSA, that's another one on Intel to be aware of. That's kind of like the VDD or the VSOC voltage that we have here on the Ryzen system. In terms of the absolute maximum voltages, they're very similar in terms of the range of safe voltages. But in general, if we're talking your typical Expo memory profile with low latency uh, and you know, decent density. So we're talking like 32 gigabytes all the way up to 96 gigabytes. The rule of thumb, at least from my perspective, is to set VSOC to 1.2 volts and then let the SPD profile, meaning XMP or Expo, set these automatically. So these, I don't actually set these at all. So anyway, guys, hope you found this video useful. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you have any questions pertaining to memory like DDR5 or whatever, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks.